welcome to Pure Gold, an honest, no-nonsense take on what it means to live daily with sexual integrity, offering practical tips and suggestions on how to strengthen your character, deepen your transparency, and grow in truth through the power of Jesus Christ. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Pure Gold Podcast. My name is Frank Honus. I hope you're having a great week. Hey, this week on the podcast, we're, we're reaching back to the archives um, to really one of the most popular, I think, episodes that we've uh, ever put out. Um, we're talking about agreements. And this was actually a podcast we put out a couple years ago. It was from a uh, talk that I gave at a, a local uh, Christian high school chapel um, that I uh, very often share at. Um, but it was, again, one of, probably one of the most popular uh, podcasts that we've ever done. And r- really, just the whole idea, I'll let Frank get into it in just a second. Um, <laughs> but really, the idea is that there are subtle uh, lies and there are subtle things that sneak into our mind that we can literally align ourselves with. And they can, mo- they can oftentimes be things that just aren't true whether there are things that we say about ourselves or things we allow people to speak over us. Um, but when we align ourselves with things that aren't true, we oftentimes we can make agreements with them and we can start living a life that is, is way less than what God wants for us. And so I share about that in this, in this podcast, and I hope that uh, you guys will be encouraged by it and uh, just allow God's truth and allow His Word um, to just soak over your life as you listen to this uh, this week. I want to also encourage you to uh, rate our podcast. If you go to ratethispodcast.com slash pure gold, that's ratethispodcast.com slash pure gold, you can go on there and check out how to rate the podcast and give us uh, a review, give, give, give us some stars on Apple Podcasts or whatever platform you listen to. We would really appreciate your, uh, your thoughts, your response, your rating. Uh, what, what are we doing? Well, what are we not doing? Well, what would you like to hear, uh, from, from pure gold? So, uh, rate this podcast.com slash pure gold is where you check that out. And of course our website is pflhome.com. That's pflhome.com. Uh, you can find all of the latest content, the podcast, you can go back to the archive. Uh, there are many, many ways to contact us on there. If you need some encouragement, support on your journey, and of course, you can connect with us on social media. There's so much to look at on the on the website. Uh, don't have a whole lot of time to, to explain all of it here, but go check it out at pflhome.com. And that's Purity for Life, the ministry. Uh, we're helping individuals live with sexual integrity through Jesus Christ uh, on a daily basis. And just so thankful for the opportunity to do that. So enjoy this podcast, this archive uh, from tw- a couple of years ago, 2018. Uh, on agreements, tackling the lies that we've believed in. Father, we just want to thank you, God, that your presence is here. It was here before we walked in the room. God, it was, it was here and tangible and present before we even opened our eyes this morning, God. And so I want to pray, Lord, just that our hearts and our minds and our, the eyes of our heart, God, would be open this morning to what you want to speak to us, God, because we know God, that you want to speak a word. God, you have, you have something tangible that you want to say to every single one of us. God, you want, your word is what transforms and your word is what changes, God. And so I ask, God, that you would help me to do that clearly this morning, um, that you would help us just to receive, God, this, this, this word that we talk about and uh, that you would really help us to search our hearts, God, for uh, maybe some of the agreements and the lies that we've been making in our own lives and uh, things that subtly, sometimes subtly, just creep in. So we love you. We love you so much. We thank you so much for this day. Even though it's rainy, uh, God, we thank you that uh, you're still present in the rain, God. And your spirit is, is just as real, even when it's dark and gloomy. And uh, God, we know that tomorrow is Saturday. Tomorrow's the weekend. And, and we just thank you for that time of rest. In Jesus' name, everybody said Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, we could just leave that picture up there the whole time. I'd be happy. That would be great. I love my family. So I wanted, that's why I wanted to show you guys a little picture of that. So yeah, <laughs> my family looks a lot better than that word probably. So um, 
But guys, I want to talk about this morning um, a word. Um, well, let me back up and just say this. Um, it, just one thing about me, um, besides my family. Uh, one of my passions in life is actually helping men um, overcome and conquer life-controlling addictions in their lives, things that they've struggled with their entire lives. And I've gotten the privilege of doing that for about 10 years now, um, since I've overcome my own struggles in life, my own addiction. And, um, and I love helping guys break, because believe it or not, us guys, we can, we can form lies about ourselves. We can form things that we think are true that aren't about ourselves. We can believe things about ourselves that aren't true. And I love to help guys overcome those lies, overcome those deceptions. And and so it kind of helped me to think about what I wanted to talk just for a few minutes to you guys about this morning. Um, As I prayed about it in my own life is this word agreements that you saw. Um, Maybe you guys have have never really probably given this word a whole lot of thought. All right. Maybe other than just an English class. I don't know. Um, But this actually this word agreements I want you to, to, to think about it, and I want you guys right now just to, to, to hold on to it, but to also just kind of set it aside for a second, because we're going to kind of start from a different angle, but we're going to come back to this word this morning, agreements. All right, so I want to start on a, uh, I want to start on a high note, okay, this morning. The high note is this. You ready for this? Let's start with the basics. You have an enemy. I have an enemy, okay? We have an enemy, All right. Starting on a real. Yeah. All right. Awesome. It's Friday morning. We have enemies. okay? but we have an enemy. His name is Satan. okay? Um, and so Satan, actually, you guys know, in the Bible, one of the names actually for uh, for Satan is the accuser. He's the accuser of the brethren. All right. In John 8, 44, verse 44 in chapter eight, the Bible calls him the father of lies. Have you ever thought about that verse, guys, the father of lies? Look at that word, father. If he were just like kind of good at it, he would be an amateur. He would just be like a beginner. But the the Bible says he's the father of lies. So he's pretty good at it. All right. So when he comes in, when a lie comes into our lives, when, when something comes in that we believe that's not true from the enemy, it's very, very hard sometimes to to distinguish it. But sometimes, uh, conversely, on the opposite side of the coin, uh, the interesting thing about Satan's lies is that sometimes they're not super obvious. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they're not. And so I want to talk um, this morning about that word. But look in, in, uh, if you have your Bibles too, um, open up to Genesis chapter 3. Um, it's also going to be up on the screen, I think, too. But in Genesis chapter 3, verse 1, we look at this, kind of looking at it from the, this angle that, that Satan's lies, right, his deceptions are not always super obvious Um, He starts to, right at the very beginning of the story, right at the very beginning of creation, right? Adam and Eve are are created, and Satan automatically begins to distort what God already said one chapter earlier, right? So in Genesis chapter 2, 16, God clearly says to Adam, he clearly says, you shall not eat from what? The tree of the knowledge of good and evil, because you will die. That's pretty clear, okay? You can't get much clearer than that. Right. The very beginning of the next chapter, Satan comes in. Right. The enemy comes in, begins to distort. Did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? It's amazing how a question, nothing wrong with questions. Absolutely nothing wrong. We should always, always ask questions. But it's also interesting how a question can totally begin to distort truth. And so that's what Satan uses in this. He uses a question to distort what God clearly said in, uh, in, in chapter 2. So let's go back to this word for a second, okay? Let's go back to agreements, all right? What are agreements? If I say that word agreements, let me give you guys just a little bit of a better uh, picture of what this is. Agreements are this. Agreements are how you interpret, sit, interpret situations, people, reality, yourself, and even God. All right, let me just say it one more time because I really want that to sink in. Agreements are how you interpret. That's a really key word in this, okay? Interpretation. I want that's a word you need to hold on to here too, in agreements. Interpretation. Agreements are how you interpret situations, people, reality, yourself, even God. All right? And so um, what I thought would be really helpful for us is not just give you a definition, but I want to give you guys some categories, some categories of what agreements look like to help you understand you know, what this is. Thank you guys, by the way, for doing that and keeping it hooked up for me. Appreciate that. 
So first category is this, all right? And this may not, you know, this may not be a surprise to you, but the first category of agreement is this, it's you. It's you. It's me. It's all of us in here. When it comes to you, when it comes to me, the things you think about yourself, the things you believe about yourself, your appearance, right? All these things, your appearance, your intelligence, your abilities, your progress. I want you just like, really, I want you to think about all of these. And you fill in the blank here because it may not even be up on the screen here. All right. What are the things about you? You know, what you say to yourself. What do you say to yourself about your appearance? What do you say to yourself about your intelligence and your mind? What do you say about how you're doing in your progress as a student, as a brother, as a sister, whatever role you play? A lot of times, guys, we can just make these, 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 these agreements that I am, whatever it is, fill in the blank, I'm an idiot, I'm worthless, I'm insignificant, I'm not special, I'm not important, I'm not doing well in school, I'm not going to make it, I'm not going to pass this test, right? I mean, just think about it. I'm not good at this, I'm not good at that. There's so many things, whenever, and I'm kind of skipping ahead, if you ever use the word never, or always in a sentence, most of the time that's probably an agreement. I never, or it will always, see that? It will never, and we'll get there in a second, I'm kind of skipping ahead, but I hate doing that. But anyway, that's the first category, right, of agreement, you. Second category that a lot of times we allow lies to come in, we let things come in, deceptions, things that are not true, again, I want you to hear that, is this, is socially, right? Where we fit in or don't fit in, you know? Um, I just really want you to think about this question. It's kind of hard to see. I know slide's a little messed up. Um, What do you think, and this is not a conviction question, but I'm 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 asking you honestly because I thought about this for my own life. What do people say about me or think about me behind my back when I'm not in the room and there's conversations going on? What do people actually think about me? What do people say about me? How do people talk about me? I mean, it is kind of a, it is a convicting question, but it's actually, it's, it's a good one. Um, and, and I used to love, when I worked in youth ministry long, long time ago, whole lifetime ago, um, I, I would do these would you rather questions because they're hysterical. They're so funny just to talk about and just get discussion going. But um, would you rather, here's one for you, be invisible so that you could be a part of a conversation when people didn't know it. Or have the ability to fly. <laughs> I mean, just be, you know, like, like really think about that. I mean, because there's a lot of weight to both of those. There's a lot of, lot of like, wow, I get to do this, you know, or I get to do this. Like flying, I don't know about you, but I've thought about flying and dreamed about flying before. Just flying, that's incredible to me. I would love to do that. But, I mean, think, of, if you had the opportunity, though, to either fly or stand in a room invisible where people are talking that you know, what might they say or not say about you? It's it's just an interesting question. So socially, right, we can allow agreements to come in. Um, And what about this? Here's another one. Future. Okay, our future. All right, how's, here's the question here. And and you guys are kind of at the later end right now. You're, you're, you know, you're just, you know, one, two, three years away from, from graduation or whatever, and you're, you're entering that next season. How is it gonna, all going to work out? How is the future going to work out for me? What's going to happen next? Some of you are thinking that. Some of you are not. I get it. I understand it. But that's, an, that's another question. We can make agreements. We can make lies that this is going to happen or this is not going to happen. You know, There's no way I'm ever going to be able to go to college or there's no way I'm ever going to be able to have this particular job that I want or this career that I want. There's no way somebody would pick me right? The future. How's everything going to turn out? So we've got you, right, as a category of agreements. Socially, we make social agreements, all right? We make agreements about our future. And I think a lot of times, if we're just truly, let's just be truly honest with ourselves. I'll be honest first. How about that? We make agreements about God. Does he speak? Does he really speak? I don't hear him. God, are you really speaking? Is he pleased with me? Is he disappointed with me? Will he really come through? Let's just be 
honest with ourselves. We ask this question sometimes. And again, the question is not necessarily the problem. It's when we buy into the question and make that a what? We make that truth when it may not be truth. We make an agreement out of something that a lot of times the enemy, remember Genesis, right? He comes into what? Just tweak it just a little bit. Just distort what God said just a little bit, right? Just, you know, God said it. Did he really say it? That's what he does. And so that's how agreements work. Agreements can come in through all those different ways, all those different categories, right? We make agreements sometimes subtly, and we just kind of file them is what we do, guys. We make the agreement, then we just kind of file it in, you know, that folder right there, and it stays there. And we may, we may not think it really matters, but in time, it really starts to come out, and it really just starts to affect us. And again, I see guys, I want to just kind of not to make this, you know, theatrical or anything, but I see guys who make agreements in their lives I've met men who make agreements in their lives, and, they, and they, their lives start to fall apart, okay? And they end up, the guys that I've worked with have ended up having addictions that have controlled their lives and messed their families up, and, and their marriage has been really messed up, and, and uh, you know, divorces that take place, a lot of pain that takes place, a lot of stuff. And agreements can come through um, traumatic things. Agreements can come through pain. Things that have happened to you in life, right? And, and you know, you don't have to raise your hand or anything, but I just want you to think about, take a little inventory right now of your life, of the things that have happened in your life that maybe you wouldn't call them trauma, but you would call them really painful. You would call them things that like really, really hurt. Okay. Agreements can come through that. They can come through those moments. Um, have, have, have any of these phrases ever gone through your head? Again, let's, let's just think about this. I will never be loved. I'm on my own. I will never be seen. I will never trust someone. Or they just don't understand me. Again, fill in the blank. Because it's, it may not be up on the screen, but we all think things, sometimes things that are totally and completely shut off from other people that other people don't know about if we don't talk about them, right? That, um, that run through our head and run through our mind. And again, you see that word in there, never, right? Never. Never, a lot of times, uh, is an indicator that there might be agreement. Here's another litmus test, okay? <laughs> this is because this is like, this is me nine times out of ten. This is like, I have to really watch myself because I struggle with this. What comes out of your mouth when something bad happens? You take some sand, like that guy right there, and you ball your fist up, you want to pound somebody, right? What, what comes out of your mouth when something bad happens or when you mess up, all right? I mean, seriously. Because that right there could be the beginning of an agreement, could be the beginning of something that you set in motion, not consciously, but you just do. And again, if the words always and the words never are in the sentence, it almost always, I won't say it's always, I'll say it's almost guaranteed, right, to be an argument or to be an, uh, excuse me, an agreement. Okay, super, super important. They never notice what I've done. It will never change. He, he will always act like that. I've thought in my life, let me just be honest, guys. I have a, um, we have a five-year-old and a three-year-old, okay? And uh, these guys who have younger siblings or you come from families and stuff with, with, with little kids in them, um, it's crazy, okay? It's crazy to have a five-year-old son, five-year-old little boy, and a three-year-old little girl, okay? And there are moments where I'm like, we will never get through this season. <laughs> we will end up passing out, you know, or just like something happening. Or I might just pull up what little hair I have left out of my head, you know. And like, we're never going to get through this season. This is like, it's always going to be like this, right? It's always going to be crazy. It's always going to be stressful. Mornings, getting ready. It's always going to, you know. Again, that might seem silly to you. Those are agreements. I'm setting up agreements. I'm setting up lies. I'm setting up things that, that the enemy can use to mess with me and to, to really ultimately to, to destroy me, okay? To bring compromise in my life. To not allow me to be free. So what do we do, right? That's the question. What do we do? Like, honestly, when you have a lie come in your head, when you have an agreement come in and you sometimes, I mean, let's just be honest. How many people, when you, when you have a lie come in your head, let's just be honest. How many people can always detect the lie? You always know if it's a lie or not. 
Okay, I think you guys are being honest with me, <laughs> right? Because, I mean, a lot of times we can't. Sometimes, you know, for the most part, we can't when a lie comes in. Sometimes we can, sometimes we can't. Um, but I would say more often than not, maybe we can't. So what do we do? All right, and, and this is what Jesus said. Jesus said this. He said, you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. I love how the Passion Translation puts it. If you've ever read the Passion, it's a great, another, in addition to what you always read, maybe, um, you know, NIV or whatever, but the Passion says this, for if you embrace the truth, and notice that word, guys, embrace. Embrace means you have to pick it up. You have to take it, right? You have to bring it onto yourself. For if you embrace the truth, it will release true freedom into your lives. And so I would just, think, I would just say this, guys, even just this week, this month, Stuff you've been feeling, lies you've been believing, th- things that have come in that have really just tried to tear you down, okay? Ask God, God, shine your light upon the agreements that I've made in my life. Whether it's about yourself, whether it's about your future, whether it's about your relationships, what it, even if it's about God, listen, he's not offended if you have started to question any one of those things. Remember the God slide there. God, are you really speaking to me? Do you really care? Are you disappointed? Are you pleased? He's not offended that you ask him those questions. Okay, he's so big. He's bigger than all of that. Just be real. Be, be honest. God, shine your light on the lies. Shine your light on the agreements that I've made. Like literally, I renounce the agreements in my life that I've made And I renounce the ground because when an agreement takes place, guys, and a lie starts to settle into your mind and starts to settle into your heart, it starts literally gaining ground. It's like a real war that's taking place. I mean, this is real. This is more real than any any movie you could ever watch. There's ground that he's literally taking that we have got to renounce. The effect, the impact that, that, that Satan's lies, a real enemy who wants to destroy you, we have to renounce that ground and that impact that he makes on our lives. The effect, the pain that it causes. And so um, maybe before next, you know, when you feel an agreement coming on, when you feel that, that, that lie begin to take place, start to conjure up in your, in your heart. I, I really want to encourage you to do this. We do this a lot in the group that, the group that I lead and the, the men that I work with um, is really pay attention to your emotions, all right? I'm, I'm serious. Ask the question, what am I feeling right now? Guys, I get this is harder for us, okay? This is, this is harder for men to do, all right? It's easy for you girls. <laughs> it's just easy, all right? It's just, it's just how we're wired. It's easy. A lot of, nine times out of ten, it's easy, okay? But, it, but ask the question, what am I really feeling right now, okay? Before you allow an agreement to take place, Pay attention to the emotions going on. Are feelings everything? No, feelings are not everything. We shouldn't make decisions based on feelings. But feelings do point to stuff that's going on in our hearts, in our minds. They're indicators, guys. So, so true. Okay? So, <laughs> I've heard this question now. What's going through your head right now? What's going through your mind right now? I know it's a Friday morning, so probably not a whole, whole lot. I get it because it's the weekend tomorrow and we're like, we're checked out. But, but really, what is going through your heart, okay? What's going through your heart? What's going through your mind right now? Because that helps us to understand the activity taking place. And like I said earlier, um, when, we, when we start to think about feelings, when we start to think about emotions, we can begin to, to, to gain ground on this. So I'm getting ready to close. Um, I'm getting ready to pray here in a second. But I just want you to, to, to begin asking these questions. Jesus Come into what's going on with my life right now. Come into this. What is really going on in my heart? What's really going on in my my mind? It's so easy, guys. Um, And I've gained a lot of ground on this and I've grown in this area, but it's so easy for me to think negatively. For me to think about the negative before the positive comes. For me to look to what's wrong versus what's right. Okay? But, But when you start to think negatively, when I start to think with a negative attitude and I start to feel like I'm making an agreement, here's what we have to do. We have to stand up and say, no, I'm not that person. I'm not that man. I'm not that woman. 
Remember, I love the songs we're singing this morning. I love, I love the worship took place, and I really appreciate you guys doing that. But here's a, here's a real truth. When you guys start to feel that battle take place in your life, I just encourage you to stop and say, no, I am, I'm his son. I'm a son of God. I'm a daughter of God. Do you realize how much truth and how much power is just in that statement alone? God, I'm your son. I am your daughter. And I'm not going to allow these agreements. I'm not going to allow lies to come in. Things that, are, that the enemy wants to say are true about me that are not true. I'm not going to allow it. You have created me to be free. You've created me to be whole. You've created me to have joy. Right? Fruit of the Spirit. All of it. I want it all every single day. I want bunches. I want all of it, right? I want every single bit of it I can get in my life because that's what God wants for me. That's how God wants me to live. And, and even your, the, the good things, guys, and, and I know we haven't spent a lot of time, we talked a lot about agreements, but not a lot about like, like victories and, and successes and things like that, but things that are good in your life, right? Things you achieve, achievements, successes, accomplishments, right? All that stuff, victories. Release those things to God as well. Give those back to him because they're his. That's, that's all credit that goes to him, okay? All the positive things, all the good things. And really, this is what it comes down to. Remember at the beginning I said agreements, but what was the definition of agreements? How we what? What was the word there? Interpret, right? God, here it is, and I'm done. God, I want your interpretation. God, I want your interpretation over my life. Let God speak into your life. He does speak. He really does speak. And I hope you guys know that. I hope, I pray that you have heard his voice because he does speak and he wants to speak truth over your life. And I just know, guys, I know how hard it is when a lie comes in here, it starts to travel down here. And then once it's here, it starts taking root and it flows outward. And um, I, know we're, I know we're probably really tight on time, but is there any way that you can just sing a chorus over it just before we go, just real quick? That, uh, yeah, so guys, I, I'm done. I want to pray over you, and I'm going to let you guys go, but I'm just so, I, I, feel like I'm honest, I feel like honestly this is a moment right now where God just wants to help some of us this morning see some of the agreements and see some of the lies and this is, I want to just really encourage you and challenge you guys. It's a really serious moment because I really feel like God's saying, okay, look, here it is, here it is, here it is. To, eat, to, to, to some people in here, maybe not everyone, but guess what? This message is for someone in here. This message is for me, if not anyone else. God's saying, here's this. I want you to give it to me. You're making an agreement. You're making a lie that's not true. Whether it's, again, whether it's about you, whether it's about people around you, whether it's about your future, whether it's about your family, whether it's about him, that he's not faithful, that he's not good, that he's not real. I don't know what it is, but I know that we all, every single one, it really comes down to whether we're just going to be honest and say, okay, yeah, okay, I've got some too, but I don't want to live with them. And so I just want to ask you guys to close your eyes right now. I don't have, guys, seriously, I don't have a fancy prayer. I don't have, um, you know, a, a special way to really close this. But, but, God, but, guys, what I want you to just see is just begin, as Tim is playing and singing over us, I want you to begin to really try to see those agreements. I want you to begin to try to see even the little small things, the subtle things that have tried to come into your life, that you would say, God, no, that's not who I am. I am your son. I am your daughter. Give me your interpretation, God. I want your interpretation over my life. Not the world's, not, not even my own, God. But I want your interpretation over my life. I'm going to pray over you guys in just a second, but I want Tim just to sing over us for a couple moments. Just begin searching your hearts, guys. Begin searching your hearts. sets free oh it's free indeed I'm a child of God yes I am in 
my father's house there's a place for me yeah just begin searching right now if you if you want some prayer right now I, I just encourage you come up I love to pray over you just as we sing a little bit longer, okay? I love to pray one-on-one with you. You need some prayer over something that you're struggling with in your mind and your heart. Just come right on up. I'll pray over you. I would love to. Go ahead, Tim. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am chosen, not forsaken. I am who you say I am. You are for me, not against me. I am who you say I am. I am who you say I am. Let's think so, the sun. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free indeed. I'm a child of God, yes, I am. In my Father's house, there's a place for me. I'm a child. Yes, I am. Father, we just thank you. We come to you this morning, God, proclaiming this truth. Whom the Son sets free is free indeed. We are your sons and daughters. And we break the agreements right now in Jesus' name. We break, we break lies. We break principalities. In Jesus' name, we break those subtle agreements, the, the things that would come in and say that we are a certain way or, or we'll never do this or we'll never do that or we're always going to be this. Whatever the lie is, in Jesus' name, we break it right now. And I pray over your sons and your daughters, God, right now, that truth would abound, God, in them. That they would not live lives where, where they're battling and fighting all the time against lies, against things that are not true. I pray over every man in this room and every, every son and every daughter in this room. Every man and every woman. God, from high school or all the way to staff member, God. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. So God, just begin to plant truth in us as we go now. As we go into our next class or trip or wherever we're going, God. Just plant truth in our hearts, God, and let it abound and let it grow like fruit, God. I'm getting ready to close, but if you guys are getting ready to leave and you want some prayer before I leave, I would love to pray over you. But Father, just come up to me, grab me, hit me on the back of the head. We'll pray together. We'll get things right. I don't want you guys to leave here with any kind of of battle or struggle or lie. So Jesus, bless this crew, bless this group. God, we want to walk in your truth this morning, and we thank you that you are truth, God, that you want, you long to set us free, that I am who you say that I am, God. We love you so much, and I thank you, God, for this incredible worship and this incredible school, God, that you've given us. I pray that Greenwood Mennonite School would continue to instill truth in students, God. And that we would take hold of what you have for us, God. That we would live free, wildly free, God. Wildly free. Unbound. We love you so much. And we pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for listening to Pure Gold, our weekly podcast from Purity for Life. Don't forget to visit our website for additional content, including our entire podcast archive articles, links, and videos to help encourage you on your journey for sexual purity. All this and more can be found at pflhome.com.